Okay, so welcome to another device right here. And on this one, we're going to talk about these steps. And, uh, and I get two sounds. One, uh, one with a clip, you know, just audio. And another one with MIDI. So I'm going to show you what the, what, the clip one, uh, you know, the clip sounds. But with a little bit of reverb, a little bit of chorus, and a little bit of delay. And I'm just filtering a little bit of the frequencies because if it's just not, it's just, it's going to sound, sound a little bit too harsh. It's cool. But it's not, that's not what I want right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go right here and bring these steps. So, uh, this one is actually really cool and really useful. And I think of this like, um, like an envelope kind of a thing. We can draw an envelope and just perform some kind of modulation. This is why we get this. But of course, we get it in a more step uh, kind of a fashion. So, okay, so right now what I want what we can do, we can draw steps. We can go up or we can go down. So the uh, this has a positive and negative polarity, right? So it means that we get 16 steps because this is, of course, kind of a step, kind of a sequencer. And we can draw our way uh, through the 16 steps. And this one, will, of course, will provide an instruction. It's going to go up and at one point it's going to go down and then it's going to go down, up again if you want it to, right? Just, again, pretty simple stuff. Now, this one is a modulator, so we need to modulate something and follow this behavior, right? That's what we want. So in this case, what I want to do, I'm just going to go to that filter, and I just want to move the filter. That's it. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to play the same sound. So notice right here, we go up, and then we go down, and on this position, we are going down. So this is what's going to be decided. It's going to be decided by the amount. The amount is all the way to 100%. If you go to, you know, the middle position, nothing is going to happen. You get the same sound. Now, if we invert it, this one is going to go up, and now this one is going to go down. Now, with this one, you can do up to 64 steps, which is kind of a crazy. And this is why I'm telling you, this one works kind of a like an envelope kind of a generator. Uh, an envelope we can draw because we can go and do something, you know, crazy like this or, you know, whatever. And it's going to work. It's just going to go through the 64 steps and move the way we want it. All right, so pretty cool. Now notice that the changes right here, we can see the changes on the filter. And the steps are going to be a, a little bit rigid. It's not like smoothing up and down. It's not, it's not going on a smooth fashion. So this one, and this is something we didn't have, uh, we didn't have on previous version of Bidwick. They've added this and it's, you know, really cool. So this one is going to smooth that transition. So now notice that the movement is much more smooth, much more useful. Right. Now, of course, what we can do, we can clear the steps, pretty simple, or maybe we want to create kind of a random behavior. So I'm going to go back to something not so long, maybe 16 steps, and I'm going to go and do some random. So now we can do a little bit of experimentation with this. We don't need to, you know, go and draw everything. Right, pretty simple. So right here, what we can do, we can go in a loop, which means that whenever it starts, uh, it's going to go to the end and start over. We are going in a loop. Now this one, if I play it, it's going to start and it will not loop. It's going to stop right here on the last step. So that's why, you know, we are going down. It's, we are stuck right here. So if I change this, of course, I'm going to go back to the default. But always remember the last step is going to be default. Now, the cool thing is that you can go and do 17 steps and this one is going to go down, but this one is going to be the default. So if I play it again. Right. Another thing we can do if we go and loop in this case. We can go back and forward. It's going to go start and then go back and forward. And I'm going to keep it on the 16 steps now for now. Now, the other way is 
how are we going to start? Are we starting from the beginning or are we starting from the end since we are going back and forward? So what you can do, you can change this and you can start from the end and then go to the beginning and then back to the end. Pretty simple. All right. So of course, right now, whenever we start something, whenever we uh, do play, always starts at one point. For now, I'm just going to start it from the beginning. If I play, it starts from the beginning, I stop before this is done, and I'm going to do play again, and it's going to start from the beginning. That's, you know, kind of uh, the way it works. So right here, you get the face. So this is what it means. It will alter the face of this, you know, motion, and it will alter the position where it's starting. Notice if I stop it, it's starting right here and not on the beginning. So if I go maybe there, gonna go to play. Just, yeah, let me just do a little bit more. It's gonna start there. Always starting on the same place. Yeah. Now, of course, something very important that we get with this one is gonna be the mix. a nice blend control. The other thing that is very important is going to be how fast are we going to go, right? Right now it's going to a rate. So you have a lot of options right here. Right now we're going in 16th. What happens if we go, we go an 8? It's just going to go slower. Go faster. Now this one, in, in the case of this one, is going to work like an offset. So we're going to goes faster and faster. So this is going to mess with whatever we are using right here. If I go slow, it's going to go slower. Or you can even go in Hertz and do it manually, right? As you go up, this time is going to go faster because we are using Hertz instead of, uh, you know, steps. All right. Again, so pretty simple controls. This, this, you know, uh, this steps uh, device is very easy to understand, very simple to understand. Uh, and it's a very useful thing because now we can use it to modulate a lot of things. And on this one, we are using a, we are kind of a, using a, a sound, a clip. So we are working on an audio track. So we can only modulate, you know, audio things. But we can also use it to modulate a synth, for example. Now, for first, I want to show you how, how this works, because right now, everything, every time we start, we are always starting from the uh, beginning. And I'm going to go to 16th. It's always a start from the beginning. And this is because we have the mode right here, the trigger mode. And you have a lot of modes. So the first one is going to be the transport. This means that we'll, it, it will listen to the status, the tempo, and the beat position. So uh, it's going to listen whatever you do on the transport. That's why whenever we start it, it's just starting from the beginning. It's because it's listening to this. Now, the other ones are going to be with groove. So this one, it will uh, take into account uh, what you're using as a groove right here, right? And the next one is going to be free running. And I'm going to go, and it says independent from the transport. Okay. so. I'm going to select that one, free running, and notice I'm not playing. There's no play right here at the top, and it's going. So now it's, it's working like an LFO, where, you know, it's not re-triggering, you know, the LFO. It just goes and goes and goes. It doesn't matter. I do play or I stop. It's just going to start whatever this position is. Just free running. That's what it means. All right. So the other ones are useful when we use something that has MIDI notes because it's going to be listening to whatever we play on the MIDI keyboard. That's why I have this ARP right here. So I'm going to go to this one right now and I'm going to go right here. You know what? I'm going to go and start from the scratch. I'm going to go and do clear. And we pretty much have the same thing. We are not doing anything. I'm going to let me just show you how this sound. sounds like maybe it sounds like crap. So you know what? I'm going to add this delay and the reverb there so we can get just a just a better sound because right now 
Sounds like crap, so I'm gonna go to the delay, it's maybe a little bit too much. Much better. So now, of course, what we want to do, what we want to do is to use this to modulate whatever is happening right here, but now we can use it with a synth, right? We can go and draw, and draw something. I already have something patched in, so let me just remove it and start over. So I'm gonna go and do and say that I want to handle the frequency, right? And there we go, we are just modulating the frequency. But of course you can do a million things, you can go maybe up in unison, something like that. And you're gonna start getting, you know, different sounds. Maybe I want to go and do a little bit of sub, and a little bit of sub right here. And I'm gonna do a little bit of, a little bit of the, uh, of the shape. So notice how this sounds, it's just, just different. Just a very useful thing. Now remember, remember the modes. We get the transport, it starts and ends whenever we do play and you know all the other ones but now we have this one it says note restarts plays at the same rate with new notes restarting the pattern so it means that if i select that one is going to restart every time you know we play so i'm gonna go and do stop and notice that nothing happens when i select this one so it means that it's gonna go by the rate we use right here right so let me just go 16 that's okay and I'm going to do some playing. And here's what happens. Every time that we it's we are playing a new MIDI note, it's restarting. So maybe this ARP or this mode, it's not very useful because we are not advancing through, through the steps. Because we are restarting every single time. So maybe this mode is going to be uh, something more useful if you have sustained notes. Right? So then we have the other ones, note random. Notice that it will go and just plays on play on different places. That's why it's random. And then we get the note advance. So this means that every time we uh, detect a new incoming node, it's going to go to the next step. And you know, forward and forward and forward. And this could be something cool if we do something, you know, something like that, and you know, just provide a different instruction. All right. Now, at the end of the day, remember that you can go and you can go crazy on this one. I'm gonna go and do something like this. Alright, and I'm gonna go and maybe, maybe I wanna go faster. So I'm gonna go to the other one, to the transport. And maybe I wanna go up and I want to create kind of a, kind of a percussive sound, right? Because we are using a filter, so... So I want to do that, I want to create a, a percussive sound. So this will change how this ARP works, right? Because we are moving up and down with a filter. So we are changing kind of the essence of the whole clip. So without, it's just very different. So we could do the same thing with the other one. If I go and stop this one and play the synth, and we are just handling this, just like, like this, we can maybe, again, go and create that percussive and we, we have a, a kind of a rhythm pattern right now. And remember how this sounded, how this, how this sounded. It was sustained notes, and now it has a different character. All right, so you can use it like this to create a, a, a pattern or something, some rhythmic kind of a pattern out of a simple, very simple chord. Okay, so 
So thanks for watching. Remember to like the video if you find this useful. Remember to subscribe and remember that everything I do right here is going to be on Patreon first. So make sure you check Patreon. And, uh, and okay, so see you on the next one.